Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. We pray that you are in good health. We ask that all present respect the guidelines here at the Basilica to prevent the spread of COVID-19, including using hand sanitizers, maintaining a distance of two meters, and wearing face masks at all times within the church. We will not have a collection at this mass, but we, there are collection boxes provided for you at the entrance and the exit of the church. You can use your envelopes to donate or you can donate online on our parish website at thebasilica.church, or you can mail or drop off your donations to the parish office and receive a tax receipt. The donations pay for live streaming for the utilities and salaries of the parish so our parish can continue to operate. Thank you for continuing to support the Basilica Parish. At the time of communion, we will give you further instructions. At the end of Mass, we ask that you follow the ushers' directions for leaving the church. Our gathering chant this morning is All People That On Earth Do Dwell, number 578 in the Catholic Book of Worship, and our presider is Father Cecil Critch. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. Happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers, grandmothers, godmothers, special mothers in our lives, both here and in heaven. We also welcome today uh, Mother Mary Bernadette here, foundress of uh, New Order, <clears throat> the Sisters Community of the Queenship of Mary in Ottawa. So they've come a long way, drove here. This afternoon at two o'clock, we will have uh, devotion, a Lady of the Cape, uh, pilgrim statue tour, beginning at two o'clock for all those interested on that special, special event during Mother's Day today. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery on this Good Shepherd Sunday, we ask the Lord to come into our hearts to forgive us for the times we have failed to love one another, for the times we have failed to be compassionate and merciful to others, we ask the Lord's forgiveness. Lord, 
Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. To God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God Almighty Father. only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, Lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and Barnabas went on from Perga and came to Antioch in Pisidia. On the Sabbath day, they went into the synagogue and sat down. When the meeting of the synagogue broke up, many Jews and devout converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who spoke to them and urged them to continue in the grace of God. The next Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. But when the Jewish officials saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy. And blaspheming, they contradicted what was spoken by Paul. Then both Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly, saying, It was necessary that the word of God should be spoken first to you. Since you reject it and judge yourselves to be unworthy of eternal life, we are now turning to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us, saying, I have set you to be a light for the Gentiles, so that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and praised the word of the Lord. And as many as had been destined for eternal life became believers, Thus the word of the Lord spread throughout the region. But the officials incited the devout women of high standing and the leading men of the city and stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and drove them out of their region. So they shook the dust off their feet in protest against them and went to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 
the response to Psalm 100, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. A reading from the book of Revelation. After this, I, John, looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. And one of the elders then said to me, these are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord.
to you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, the fourth Sunday of Easter is Good Shepherd Sunday, and uh, on a couple of occasions, I took students uh, from school uh, to uh, Rome and uh, for various occasions, and uh, we went to the catacombs under Rome. There's a whole bunch of you know, many kilometers under the city of Rome uh, where the early Christians secretly gathered for worship and, uh, of course, during the persecutions as well. Um, many of the early Christian community uh, in Rome are buried there. And one of the common images painted on the walls of the catacombs was the image of Jesus as the Good Shepherd, carrying the lost sheep on his shoulders back into the safety and companionship of the flock. And this image is a beautiful image, and it speaks to us of the care and compassion and guidance that Jesus offers. It reminds us that each one of us is loved as if we were the only one. Each one of us has a special place in the heart of the Good Shepherd. And Jesus speaks of himself as the Good Shepherd who laid down his earthly life for us so that we may all have life to the full, eternal life. So it is understandable why this image of the Good Shepherd, Jesus the Good Shepherd, appealed to the members of the early church community in whose, in the early centuries of our church, must have felt lost and vulnerable, surrounded by threatening wolves who stood ready to devour them. Indeed, in the early centuries of the church, there were many persecutions, many martyrs who laid down their life, their lives for the faith. The image of Jesus as the Good Shepherd spoke to the early church in the first century, and it speaks to us today. Like those early Christians, we too can sometimes identify them ourselves as followers of Jesus under threat. Our faith can feel undermined by forces of various sorts in our society that are often hostile to the Catholic faith, or at least who are not supportive of the faith. We can, may not be going through a period of persecution like the early Christians, at least in this part of the world, but there are many Christians suffering and dying these days around the world for their faith, many martyrs. Here in Canada, in more subtle ways, we can feel that our faith is often under threat from various sources. In such times, we need to draw strength from each other's faith, in other words, we need the community of faith, the church, because we do not walk this journey of faith alone. There is a very beautiful image of, in the second reading read today, about the gathering of the church in heaven. It speaks of a huge number impossible to count from every race and nation and tribe and language standing in front of the throne and in front of the Lamb. The church on earth also embraces people of every nation and race and tribe and language in a foreshadowing of that even greater heavenly gathering. The Good Shepherd has laid down his life for us, now as risen Lord, and continues to protect and defend us. Whenever we wander away from him, Jesus, the Good Shepherd, will always search for lost, lift us on his shoulders, and bring us home. The sheep that belong to me, says Jesus, listen to my voice. Jesus goes on to say the second part, very important part, and they follow me. It is very difficult to listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd in the world today when there are so many competing voices that often lead people astray to the wrong path. It's not just enough to listen to the Lord's voice. Our baptism calls us to follow the voice of the Good Shepherd as well. We have to allow his word to shape us, to mold our thoughts, words, and actions. We are to believe what Jesus believed to give importance to what Jesus gave importance to, to defend the dignity of the human person as Jesus did in solidarity with the powerless and the vulnerable as Jesus was, to trust in God the Father and his providence, 
to face life and death with the hope with which Jesus faced it. Comf comforting, conforming our lives to the person of Jesus is a lifelong journey and the Lord continues to call us even when our response grows weak. This weekend, we also celebrate special shepherds in our lives, our own mothers. They not only gave us the precious gift of life, but have nurtured and loved us in our joys and sorrows, and whose love imitates the love of Jesus the Good Shepherd, as they sacrifice for their families and lay down their lives for them every day. Today is also Vocation Sunday. It is a day when we are asked to reflect on our own baptismal call, our vocation. We all share the one baptismal vocation that is the call of Jesus, the Good Shepherd, to listen to his voice and to follow him. The Good Shepherd calls each of us by name and leads us out, and leads us. The Lord calls each of us by name. If we are to hear the call of the Lord in this busy, noisy world, we need to take time to find a place to listen for his voice. Because the Lord's call, you know, is a personal call to each one of us, so we need to listen to him because he calls us by name. In baptism, which we all share, Jesus has some particular task or duty that he wants each of us to do in order to further the com coming of God's kingdom here on earth. We are to be missionary disciples of his word. So today is a day we are invited to reflect on the ways we feel called. In our first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, we see Paul and Barnabas, they valued the good news of the Lord so much they experienced a strong call to preach that word of God to the Jews and Gentiles, even in the face of hostility. The early Christians valued, valued God's word and kept Jesus as the center of their lives, and they experienced a call to create, be courageous and to be faithful to the Lord, even in spite of persecution. We need to appreciate the life-giving quality of the word of God and allow it to feed our spiritual hunger and quench our spiritual thirst. We need to make a real effort to place the living word of Jesus at the center of our faith communities and of our own lives as believers. So today we were asked, especially in our prayers, to pray for vocations to the priesthood and religious life, especially in our own archdiocese. May we have the hands of the Good Shepherd to reach out to those in need. May we have the feet of the Good Shepherd to hasten to help the poor and outcast. May we have the compassionate eyes of the Good Shepherd to see the needy. May we have the ears of the Good Shepherd to hear the cries of the poor and the suffering and the sorrowful in our world. May we have the heart of the Good Shepherd to love one another and to be a Good Shepherd for one another. Uh, please stand now as we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We turn in great trust to our Heavenly Father, trusting in God's merciful help for us as we offer our prayers of intercession. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for Peter, our Archbishop, that the Holy Spirit may give them the grace and courage to be faithful witnesses of the Word of God in difficult times. 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Archdiocese, as we continue the process of restructuring and renewal, that the Holy Spirit will gift us with courage and wisdom during these times of challenge and change. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace of listening and for a spirit of discernment, as we prepare for the 2023 Synod of Bishops, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, especially in Ukraine and the Middle East, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing power of the Holy Spirit for all the sick, and we pray for all those who are continuing to be affected in body, mind, and spirit by the ongoing pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For vocations to the priesthood and religious life, especially in our archdiocese, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of our departed loved ones, and we pray especially for all of our departed mothers, grandmothers, adoptive mothers, and other special mothers, that they may rest in the peace of the risen Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for the prayers in the quiet of your hearts, your own intentions for this Mass. We pray to the Lord. And God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the grace and blessings you give us every day. And we make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, the Good Shepherd, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For our good and for the good of all his holy church. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is a sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever, and therefore overcome with paschal joy every land, every people, exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. And therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your, your resurrection, resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross, to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look at favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, 
with all the bishops, priests, deacons, and religious, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters, inspiring us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and martyrs, St. John the Baptist, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ your son. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. pray with confidence to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we share with one another now the peace of Christ. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am I'm not worthy that you should, that you should enter, enter into my roof, but Lord, only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. A prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, for you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. To ensure that the reception of Holy Communion takes place in a safe and respectful manner, we ask that you please follow these instructions. Please remain in your pew until invited forward by an usher. Ensure your face mask is correctly worn before coming forward and maintain a two meter social distance in the communion line. As you approach the line, sanitize your hands before receiving Holy Communion. After responding, Amen, and after receiving Holy Communion, please step aside to consume the host and return to your pew as directed by ushers. 
those unable to receive Holy Communion in the hand may come forward to receive a blessing. took the bread he broke Jesus shared the bread he broke and said do this do this in memory of me Jesus took the wine he poured Jesus shared the wine he poured and said do this do this in memory of me Jesus took the bread he broke, Jesus shared the bread he broke, and said, do this, do this in memory of me. Jesus took the wine he poured, Jesus shared the wine he poured, and said, do And all who live in me will bear great fruit. Jesus took the bread he broke. Jesus shared the bread he broke and said, do this, do this in memory of me. Jesus took the wine he poured. Jesus shared and said, do this, do this in memory of me. I am the bread come down from heaven, and all who eat this bread will have eternal life. Jesus took the bread he broke, Jesus shared the bread said, do this, do this in memory of me. Jesus took the wine he poured, Jesus shared the wine he poured, and said, do this, do this in memory of me. All who come to me shall not hunger, and all who come to me shall not thirst. Jesus took the bread he broke, Jesus shared the bread he broke, and said, do this, do this in memory of me. Jesus took the wine he poured, Jesus shared the wine he poured, said, do this, do this in memory of me. I am the vine, you are the branches, and all who live in me will bear great fruit. Jesus took the bread he broke, Jesus shared the bread
Just a couple of announcements here today. Um, in the bulletin, there's a, at the Center of Life fundraiser, uh, has a 50-50 draw, so we can support uh, Linda and her efforts at the Center for Life. Uh, that would be greatly appreciated. As I mentioned at the beginning of Mass at 2 p.m. today, we'll have Our Lady of the Cape, a pilgrim statue uh, tour ce celebration today. Uh, the sisters here, the Queenship of Mary sisters, will be here and lead us uh, with Father James Fleming uh, during that hour and uh, or so, and uh, we, everyone is invited to come and participate in the Rosary and uh, various other parts of that uh, uh, event today at two o'clock at our church. And I thank the sisters for their presence and for for bringing that gift to us uh, today in our parish and our diocese. And let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by, your precious, by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Today we have a blessing for mothers, for grandmothers and special mothers in our lives to nurture us. 
and for those who are our mothers who have gone before us in faith as well. So bow your heads now for God's blessing. God of love, listen to our prayer. God of holy people, Ruth and Rebecca. God of holy Elizabeth, mother of John. God of holy Mary, mother of Jesus. Bend down your ear to this request and bless the mothers of our families. Bless them with the strength of your spirit, they who has taught us, have taught us their children how to walk and stand. Bless them with the melody of your love, they who have shared how to speak, how to sing, and how to pray to you. Bless them with a place at your eternal banquet, they who have fed and nurtured the lives that were formed within them. Bless them today, now in this lifetime, with good things. Bless them with good health. Bless them with joy, love, laughter, and pride in their children, and surround them with many good friends. May they who carried life in their womb be carried one day into your divine and eternal embrace. And there for all eternity they will rejoice with their families and friends. This blessing and all grace we pray descend upon the mothers of our families. May all mothers, grandmothers, and other special mothers who have nurtured us and who have gone to their eternal reward rest in the peace of the risen Jesus, the Good Shepherd. And we bless everyone in your name, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for celebrating with us today. And may God help you, bless you, and have a good day today, especially mothers on Mother's Day. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. God bless. Our missioning hymn is O Sing to God a Joyful Song, number 544 in the Catholic Book of Worship.